So you guys wanted me to talk about the Red Guards, and I feel like there's uh, there's a couple of things that I, I find interesting about them that I, I I wish to just have a small conversation about. It's not going to be uh, that sort of specific. Uh, it's not going to be a long video, at least. I don't know yet if it's going to be, but I foresee it not to. Um, maybe one day we'll do a full-on secrets video about them, and that's going to be really cool. But uh, there's just a few things that I want to talk about. Um, first of all, <laughs> where do they come from? Uh, obviously, let's talk about the island of, or I guess the continent of Yokuda. The continent of Yokuda is one of those things in the world of Elder Scrolls which... It's intriguing because we don't get that much info about things like the Somerset Isles, um, of course, Old Mary's, you know, Yokuda and Akaviri. These are like the legends uh, between the uh, the lore of the Elder Scrolls, things that we really wish that we knew more about. And in fact, it's, it's sad because, I mean, we don't really have like an official map or, or, or look of how the continent is supposed to be. You know, we know that it is supposed to be a continent, but that doesn't really tell us much. Um, a lot of the maps that are sort of shown around, they portray this group of, well, I guess, about decent-sized uh, islands uh, to the west of Hammerfell. But in reality, uh, it is believed that the continent might have been as big, if not bigger, than Tamriel itself. And that's what I find interesting. But before I even go there, because I am already there, but before, I would like to just say beforehand that most of the lore that we have on, you know, the left handed elves, uh, the Yokurans, you know, all of this stuff is based out of out of game lore which is fine i usually you know i tend to use a lot of out of game lore you know things like the novels and uh, some of the stuff that the sort of writer for, for the writers for, for elder scrolls you know write um however the story where this where all of the lore that i'm about to say sort of comes from um <laughs> it's based out of the, on this story the story is called uh lord vivek's sword meeting with Cirrus the Restless. And uh, yeah, it's essentially just a duel between uh, Vivek and this guy called Cirrus the Restless. Um, the story, however, uh, starts with it sort of saying, hey, this might not necessarily be true. <laughs> None of this might necessarily be true. It could be, it could not. Um, and I mean, Elder Scrolls in general is already sort of like that, where things are just not necessarily true, even though a person believes it to be true. You know, whatever uh, Vivek might think to be true, not necessarily means that it is true, right? Uh, very likely, but uh, not necessarily. So just take this with a grain of salt. Um, but it is one of the only sort of factors of lore that we have, so I want to use it, uh, obviously with giving you guys this small sort of disclaimer. But here we go. Um, it says that the empire of the left-handed elves was supposed to be about four times bigger than that of the humans over in Tamriel. Now, why am I being so vague? Um, in the story, there is this sort of group of entities, and we should sort of, I guess, maybe scale it back a little bit. So, there are three different groups of people in Yokuda. They are obviously the left-handed elves, they were the Yokudans, and then there were the Ansu. Now the Ansu are this group of uh, fighter slash wizards that were incredibly powerful. Now the person who said this was an Ansu, which we have to assume they're humans, um, but we have to assume that they're sort of like the Yokudan, so they're essentially just black humans, right? Uh, what they said was that they defeated the left-handed elves, an empire that was supposed to be four times bigger than that of the White King. Now, I don't know specifically which White King he's referring to when he says that. Um, of course, we have to assume that it is not an elvish king because this is coming from a human. Um, otherwise, he would specify that it would be an elvish king. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, right? It, even it, it, regardless of whether if it is like the Remen king, uh, the Remen Empire rather, or the Septim Empire, or whatever it is, it is very likely that having it be four times bigger than that 
is kind of a big deal. So this sort of tells us that Kyokura might have been pretty big. It also tells us that the Ansu were incredibly powerful. In fact, a story says that the Ansu, this, this wizard warriors, had the ability to cut things that normally wouldn't be able to be cut. And it talks about, say that I'm gonna duel with you. It says that you would suffer a wound before I even slash you with my sword. So it's this very sort of like, I don't know, this very magical sort of sword fighting that I think is kind of neat uh, that they possess. Now we know the wind shear weapon from Skyrim. It, uh, it had that ability to sort of like, I guess, project that sort of wind power from the blade. Maybe it is something like that, and, and definitely it's it's a scimitar, so we have to assume that it comes from Redguards, right? So it comes from sort of that school of magic <laughs> that they may have over there. But it's just interesting that they have this sort of unique spellcasting ability. Um, but it also talks about the magic that the elves possessed. Apparently, the left-handed uh, elves that used to live in Jokura had the ability to control sand in a manner that we have never seen before. This sort of crazy geomancy type of ability. They could uh, build cities out of sand. Uh, seemingly in a matter of minutes. They would just start casting their spell and the cities would just grow from the sand. Uh, they had the ability to transform sand into armor. Uh, they had the ability to dig really, really fast into the sand and, and move from one place to another, almost like some kind of drill or I don't know, um, which is kind of impressive. Uh, and of course, we know that the Yokudans themselves had, and I mean, we know this from the Red Guards from the present day, uh, their fighting ability, it's really unmatched. I mean, when you talk about the best warriors in any of the games, it's usually, you know, between two different classes. You're talking the Orcs and you're talking the Red Guards. Now, we know that the Red Guards obliterated the Orcs in a war that I'm going to talk about later, so... I guess it is safe to assume that probably when you talk about the strongest warriors in the world, you're probably talking about the Yokudans, right? So we're talking about three different groups of really powerful individuals um, that sort of fought together. Now, general knowledge tells us that the Yokudans defeated the left-handed elves. However, this story claims that it was indeed the Ansu who defeated the elves. And then the Yokudans went on and defeated the Ansu. Um, the story... Uh, claims that the Ansu, in their anger for being defeated by the Yokudans, you know, they did this thing where it's just like, okay, if we cannot have the continent, then you cannot have it either. And then they just destroyed the island, forcing it to sink into the ocean. And that was the reason why they were forced to, the Yokudans, that is, they were forced to move from Yokuda into Hammerfell. Um, there's a lot of... <sighs> We don't really know much, again, like, there, there's like little factoids of info here and there about Jokura. Uh, Jokura is told to us to be uh, this sort of barren land full of mountains while also having uh, sort of rich uh, vegetation uh, on the basins of the mountains. It talks about harsh politics and, and, and just lots and lots of war. Um, very harsh and, and arid climate as well, which probably means, you know, that's the reason why they were so able to sort of handle the Alakir Desert when they arrived in Hammerfell. Um, but let's talk about that process now. So what happened after they left Jokuda and went into Hammerfell? Well, when they found themselves in, in Hammerfell, uh, they found, obviously, the Alakir Desert. The Alakir Desert is uh, sort of the entirety of the west side of Hammerfell, which is essentially where they landed. Um, we know that the Alakir Desert was, at the time, filled and just, just full of giant scorpions and beasts of imaginable power. It is said that no race could actually survive in the desert, not because of the lack of water or, you know, the lack of, um, I guess, food. It really was just the monsters. There used to be just hordes of monsters that used to live in the in the desert, um, and somehow the Red Guards just managed to do it. Um, but when they found themselves in the first sort of main city, they found it to be empty. So let's talk about that story. <laughs> you see, Hammerfell uh, wasn't actually called Hammerfell 
when the Red Guards uh, came into the land. It was actually called Volenfell. Why is that, you may ask? Well, there used to be this old Dwemer. Yeah, Volenfell is actually a Dwemer name. Uh, there used to be this old Dwemer clan uh, named the, the Rorkin clan. You see, this clan uh, used to hate the Chimmer, much like every other Dwemer clan. Uh, back then, and we're talking, you know, first era, year 400. The Dwemer used to hate the Chimmer, or the Kimmer, I, I pronounce it Chimmer. I'm pretty bad with pronunciation anyway, so I just go with it. Um, the, the Dwemer used to hate the Chimmer. Uh, they, they used to battle for land a lot. However, the the Nords were invading Morrowind a lot at the time, so the Dwemer were forced to ally with the Chimmer so that they could defend their lands against the Nords. However, it seems like the Rorkin uh, didn't actually like that idea of allying with the uh, Chimmer. It doesn't really tell us that, but we have to sort of assume, because as soon as they made that, that alliance, the Rorkin were like, yeah, screw this, we're leaving. <laughs> Although it could easily just be because the Nords, you know, destroy their homes or whatever, right? Uh, there's a different possibilities. But the point is, the Rorkin said, okay, we have to live Morrowind, and we have to find a different place to settle. So how do we do that? Well, the clan leader of the clan uh, said, and he grabbed his hammer. Now, this hammer is a Volendrung. Now, you know Volendrung is a Daedric artifact that is given to you by Malekith in the games. Um, fun fact, Volendrung wasn't actually created by Malekith. It was actually created by the Dwemer. Uh, a very, very powerful hammer. So, this clan leader, he grabbed Volendrung and he swung it high up into the, into the air and threw it. He said, all right, wherever a Volendrung falls, we are going to settle there. And, well, if it fell into Hammerfell, and that's why the province is called Hammerfell, because the hammer fell in it. Um, however, uh, they didn't call it Hammerfell, they called it a Volenfell, because of Volen drunk, Volenfell, right? So the hammer fell, uh, they moved all the way over there, and they founded their city. However, uh, we know that the Dwemer disappeared. You know, when they started meddling with forces beyond their control and they they used the power of the Heart of Lorcan, uh, all of the Dwemer disappeared, including the Rorkin clan that had moved all the way over to, uh, to Hammerfell, which is interesting, right? Because they didn't even consider themselves, you know, that kind of Dwemer anymore. And they were, I don't know, uh, miles and miles away and still they were teleported away into wherever it is that the Dwemer went. Um, so the city of Voldenfell was completely empty. So by the time that the uh, Jokudans came into the city, they found it to be completely empty. And that's probably why Malekith actually has Volendrung. It's because I would imagine um, without any owner to exert its magical powers, you know, Malekith would just, just took it. I mean, we know that the orcs live very, very close um, to to Hammerfell, and uh, having all of the Dwemer cities empty would be relatively simple for the orcs to just sort of take everything over. It would make sense. Um, although it is told to us that it was the Nords who actually uh, looted much of the lands left by the Dwemer, you know, in, in that war. Um, but it is told to us that, you know, the orcs did fight the Red Guards a lot when they settled in the uh, in the Alakir Forest and in Hammerfell. In fact, it is told to us that the Red Guards just completely obliterated all the orcs that used to live in the in the in the desert. Uh, it is also told to us that giant goblins <laughs> used to live in the desert. I I'm not sure what to even imagine uh, when when they say giant goblins, but yeah, I mean giant goblins used to be there, and apparently the Red Guards destroyed them. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the story of the Red Guards. Uh, for the beginning, sort of like you know, couple of centuries, the Red Guards were very much like uh, isolated from the world. They didn't want to trade. They didn't want to talk to their races. They just wanted to just be there, be themselves, and just do their own thing. Uh, however, you know, the orcs started to become a problem, so they had to ally with the Bretons to take over the orcs, and and that's just sort of where the uh, where the trade agreements started to happen. Um, but that's also one of the reasons why you, you know the Red Guards have this sort of uh, hatred and, and, and fear of magic. It's, it's all rooted in the past, right? Like, because they used to, 
obviously hate the Ansu, who were sort of magical wielders, and they used to hate the elves, the left-handed elves, who were very much very powerful magical casters. So that's that's why they hate magic so much. It's sort of ingrained in their blood at this point. But yeah, I just wanted to have a little conversation about the Red Guards, because they're very fascinating. The story is really good. Um, just wanted to at least just talk about the things that interest me about them. I... Uh, Maybe one day, as I said in the beginning, we'll we'll do a secrets video on them that is just very, very in-depth about, like, you know, their religion and stuff. Um, I would like to talk about that at some point. I definitely wanted to keep it away from this video because it's very nuanced. They're very specific and, oh man, I just do not have the energy for that right now. But, hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, it, was, uh, it was entertaining, at least for me, to tell it. <laughs> Alright guys, see you all next time. Bye-bye. Oh, actually, before I go, um, just 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 so that you guys know that I know, uh, I pronounce it Ansu, uh, but I'm pretty sure that you're supposed to pronounce it Ansei or Ansi, uh, the name of the magical sort of warrior sorcerers from the land of Yokuda. Uh, so you know, just just saying, I'll probably just pronounce it Ansi because I I think that's how you guys are gonna want me to pronounce it, which is fine. I can do that. Um, just, just putting it out there before you guys hate me. Um, one thing also that I forgot to mention that I think is very interesting. Um, why are they called Red Guards? I, I, I totally glossed over that and I think it's sort of an important thing uh, that I should probably talk about. But yeah, it comes from uh, what they used to call themselves back in Jokuda. They, they didn't call themselves Jokudans. They used to call themselves uh, Ragada. And uh, so when they came over to Hammerfell... Um, it just sort of became this thing where like people didn't w ha had a lot of issues calling them regatta, so they just call it Radguards, I, I guess. It's like a mispronunciation of their of their original name, uh, but regatta actually means uh, warrior wave, and because I guess they used to be very proud of the fact that they used to be warriors, you know, non magical warriors or whatever. But yeah, just wanted to say that just to put it out there because I I also found it interesting and I completely forgot about it while I was doing the video. Anyways. See you guys next time. I'm sorry about all the mispronunciation. I don't even know anymore how to pronounce things, man.